So, last time we left off with the Germans conquering Paris. One thing I didn't mention was that the major industrial complex in Paris gets downgraded to a minor once the Germans take it. This happens whenever an enemy takes an area with a major industrial complex. This has to do with the attributes of a facility, which is something we'll be getting into later. This video will cover strategic bombing and tactical bombing, amphibious assaults, submarine combat, concluding combat, and a more in-depth look at facilities. So let's get started with strategic bombing. Strategic bombing can be accomplished with the strategic bomber on naval and air bases or major and minor industrial complexes. During this phase, any number of strategic bombers can strike at a facility, and when damaged, the abilities of the facility will diminish or be eliminated. In order to repair facilities, your enemy must spend IPCs in order to repair it. Note that tactical bombing occurs with tactical bombers and can only be carried out on air and naval bases. In an attack, enemy fighters in the territory may scramble to defend the facility, and attacking forces may choose to escort their bombers with fighters. If a defending fighter scores a 1, or an escort hits a 1, the attackers, or defenders, must remove a plane at once. Combat here only lasts one round. And let's look at an example. Say a German strategic bomber is attacking a factory in Ukraine, and taking one fighter for escort. Russia decides to scramble two fighters to intercept. Please note that these aircraft can no longer participate in general combat. If the defender loses that territory, then these interceptors can land on an adjacent friendly territory. Else, they land where they began. In this hypothetical, let's say Russia gets a hit and Germany's escort scores one back. This means that one Russian fighter must be removed and one German fighter as well. Once this phase is over, we move on to the next phase. If you wanted to break strategic bombing down into four phases, you would have phase one where attackers commit forces to the battle and defenders can choose to scramble. Phase two is where the air battle commences, which is what we just covered, and after one round of combat ends, the remaining attackers push on. Phase three is when a facility fires its built-in AAA guns. If a one is rolled, the attacker must remove a bomber immediately. Whatever is left gets to strike at the facility. Tactical bombers, if they roll a four, let's say, get that number of damage on the facility. If a strategic bomber rolls, it gets two added to its dice roll. For example, if a strategic bomber rolls a six, that means that there's eight damage on the facility it hits at. It should be noted that facilities in Axis and Allies have built-in AAA guns, which are separate from the AAA guns, which are physical pieces on the board. Facility AAA guns fire one shot at each plane up to as many bombers are attacking the facility. This is a key distinction as with normal AAA guns, which can only cover up to three aircraft per gun. After these rolls are done, if any ones occur, the attacker immediately removes all aircraft. The Germans are lucky this round, and none hit. So, now you're ready to bomb the facility. And as we just covered, strategic bombers added two to whatever they roll at, and tactical bombers damage at whatever number they roll at. We should take a look at facility thresholds. Major industrial complexes have a threshold of 20 damage. If anything greater than or equal to 10 damage is hit on the major industrial complex, its production capacity is eliminated. However, if only 5 damage occurs in a major industrial complex, that means that only 5 units can be placed at the complex next turn. The enemy must repair the facility to bring it back to full capacity. For minor industrial complexes, air bases, and naval bases, the threshold is 6. At a 3, minor industrial complexes can no longer produce, and naval and air bases can't function. Beyond is extra damage. We'll get more into facilities next, but it should be noted that tactical and strategic bombing are inherently important when viewed through the lens of our overall strategy. For example, strategically bombing Ukraine weakens the Soviets' ability to strike back or prepare for a counteroffensive in the south with Germany. Facilities. There are four kinds of facilities in Axis and Allies you should be aware of. Air bases, naval bases, major industrial complexes, and minor industrial complexes. With air bases, any aircraft operating from a territory with an air base can fly an additional one space. For, an, for example, a strategic bomber can fly seven spaces instead of six. With naval bases, all ships in a sea tile adjacent to a naval base can move an additional one tile. Naval bases also repair battleships and aircraft carriers. Major industrial complexes can produce Major industrial complexes can produce up to 10 units a turn, while minors can produce up to 3 units a turn. This section is fairly straightforward. 
Units in the mobilization zone are placed and can enter the game only through these facilities. If you have 11 infantry, only 10 can be placed in a major industrial complex. The rest can be placed in an already existing facility elsewhere. Amphibious Assaults Amphibious Assaults is a part of the conduct combat phase after strategic bombing and before general combat. The assault sequence for Amphibious Assaults is as follows. Sea combat, followed by battleship and cruiser bombardment, followed by land combat. Let's cover sea combat first. If there are defending surface warships, a battle is conducted until all ships of either side are gone. The attacker can choose to retreat, but no further phases will commence. Air units from the defending land tiles adjacent can also join in the battle. If there is no sea combat, continue to bombardment. If no sea combat occurs, cruisers and battleships can bombard where land units are invading. Cruisers hit at a 3 and below, while battleships hit at a 4 and below. This is conducted only once. Any hits the ship makes are totaled with the hits the attacker gets in land combat. These hits are not instantaneous as with AAA guns. Only two land units? Only two ships can bombard. Multiple coasts can mean that you can split up bombardments as well if you have two transports landing men in different areas. And finally, land combat. Land combat here works much the same as in general combat with a few minor exceptions. Let's look at an example with Normandy. The units attacking Normandy by ship cannot retreat back onto the boats, while the units attacking from Belgium can. Air units also have a choice as to whether they will partake in the sea or the land battle. Aircraft cannot do both. And with that, we've concluded with Amphibious Assault. Fairly simple. One more topic we'll cover in this episode, before we continue to the next one, is submarine combat and concluding combat. Submarine combat. Submerging or a surprise strike. A player may choose to attack or defend or submerge with their submarines before moving to attack units. If a defending or attacking navy has destroyers present, the submarines must conduct combat with the normal risk as other sea units. Submarines cannot hit air units. Any hits immediately affect combat, and this phase only occurs once. Remember, this is step 2 in the combat sequence. Now to step 7. Concluding combat. If an attacker has a unit left in the territory, they've taken it, and the territory is theirs. If there are no units left, or only one defending unit, the defender still owns it. Aircraft cannot claim a territory. Place your control marker in a captured territory and your income will increase with the territory's IPC value. You cannot mobilize units in a territory recently captured that turn. Any previous damage on facilities in that territory remain. You must now repair the facilities. That kinda sucks. Now on some final notes. Liberating a territory. If the Americans free a French territory, and Paris is in German hands, America gets that additional money until Paris is liberated. If Paris is liberated, any further territory liberated goes to the French. Capturing and liberating capitals. Capturing. Capturing a capital. If you capture a territory with an enemy capital, such as, let's say, Moscow, not only do you get the IPC value of that territory added to your income, which in this case would be 3, but you also get the entire treasury of that country. If Russia owns 27 IPCs, Germany instantly gets 27 added to their reserves. <coughs> Liberating. Once a capital is liberated, all the facilities in that country's original control go back to the owner of the original country. In the instance of France, if you liberate Paris, there's a bonus for them, but we can get into that in the next video. Well, we sure did cover a lot this video. Let's recap. We covered... Strategic bombing and tactical bombing. Amphibious assaults. A more in-depth look at facilities. Submarine combat. And concluding combat. With strategic bombing and tactical bombing, we learned the difference between the two and the different phases we went through in the process of strategic bombing. In amphibious assaults, we also learned the different phases for that, and we distinguished some details such as who can retreat and who can attack during an amphibious assault. With our more in-depth look at facilities, we learned what facility thresholds were and what they could do. In submarine combat, we learned their effectiveness and what made them null and void, i.e. destroyers. One thing I did not mention in this video is that submarines can cause convoy damage. 
I believe I may have mentioned that in a previous video, but if not, we can learn it in our final video, next video, where we'll be wrapping up the series. And finally, we learned about concluding combat and who got to own the territory once combat was complete. With this, we learned the difference between liberating a capital and capturing a capital, and what that meant for the succeeding or failing country. Hey everyone, it's Devo and Tev here. I wanted to thank you all for watching this video. I realized this was later than I said it would be, and I apologize for that. Uh, I started on this video in December and intended to release it before the end of the year, but my Sony Vegas crashed and I lost the whole project, and so I had to basically restart from scratch. Hopefully you got a lot from this video. Um, I got one more up in the series, which I should be wrapping everything up with, and then I'll be putting up some strategy videos. So until then, adios.